Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new network application update, and we are finally at Unify Network Application 10.0. This has been a long time coming, and there are some great improvements, but I'm going to warn you right now, I will be reading through the release notes. So if you don't like that, I will post the link directly to them. I will also be showing in the Unify Network application some of the new and improved updates. So let's get started. The first new change is for our Wi-Fi network and our internet settings. So when we go create a new virtual network or when we do a new wireless network or create a new WAN, when we click on new virtual network, it now pops up on the right hand side before it would open up a completely new page. So this does make it a little bit easier and one less page to have to go through. Staying on creating a new network, we can now see under IPv4, it shows us all this information. It did the same before, but in a different format. So we have gateway broadcast IP, usable IPs, IP range, subnet, DHCP pool size, and then DHCP range. Another new thing is if we scroll down and we click on manual, we could add additional IPs. So hovering over the I icon, it says additional IPv4 addresses Assigned to this VLAN, only the primary gateway IP is used by the DHCP server. So if this is something you've been looking for, now you could add additional IPs to that VLAN. Going over to our ports, and then if we select all ports, they have now added in the stats for all of the ports. They didn't have this before. So if we click on the toggle, we're going to be able to see total. We're going to be able to see by port, packets usage, PoE. We could see errors, drops, broadcast, multicast, and then download and upload. So this is nice and quick if you're trying to do troubleshooting within all your switch ports in your whole infrastructure. For our site-to-site -site VPNs, this is just a small change, but it has given us validation when we have overlapping subnets. So if I'm in the VPN and then site-to-site -site and I want to add a remote network, I'm going to do 192.168.10.0 slash 24. And if I try to add that, it's going to give me a warning that I already have that network within this local network. So we're not going to be able to add that. So that will save you a little bit of time and headache. This next update for network 10.0 has to do with our UPS. So our UPS tower and our UPS to you. Clicking on the tower, if we scroll down, we could see the safe shutdown pairing and we could do our gateway consoles now. You might have seen this in a few other videos, but the firmware wasn't released yet. So we have my Mac Telecom PM, which is my Pro Max, and we compare that. Something else that is new is this auto recovery power cycle. And this briefly cycles power when AC returns during battery use to restart connected devices. So that is really nice to see. Something that was added in Unify OS 4.4.6 and not necessarily Unify Network 10.0 is this block page. So we can see it displays a block page for websites blocked by content filtering to avoid browser warning, install the Unify certificate on the client device. So what we're going to want to do, you want to get the SSL certificate. So we'll click on that and then we're going to open it up and we're going to install it. After the certificate is installed and we go over to objects, we could create a new object. So I'll just call it block TikTok to all users. We're going to select the network and I'm just going to select my full default network and we're going to click on secure. From here, I'm going to go over to an application and we're going to select TikTok. Once done, I'm just going to press add. And now that rule is added and we'll give it a second. And then we'll try to get to TikTok to see if we get that block page. All right. Now we just clicked into TikTok.com and you can see that it shows up in a unified splash page that says web page blocked. The request website is blocked because the domain is restricted. Contact your administrator for more information. So that's nice to see rather than just a disconnected page or a 404 page. And this is the part we're going to be doing a little bit of reading. Like I said, if you don't want to listen to me read this, you could go check out the release notes yourself. But other things that they've added is improvements to the official network API. So they've extended the scope for devices and networks, access list, and then basic supporting API. So that's very nice to see if you are using the APIs. They've also added DS Lite over PPPoE, which requires Unify OS 4.4.6, which is currently out, or it requires newer OS than that. Something that a lot of people have been asking for is improvements to IPv6. I don't use IPv6, that's why I didn't show it within the network application, but it improves IPv6 addressing, reporting, and support. Added IPv6 prefix to the internet and gateway side panel, uh, displaying the prefix obtained from the ISP. It's added IPv6 subnet uh, column to setting overview and network pages, adjust DNS server validation to allowing entering IPv4 mapping 
IPv6 address under the network settings. And then we have add additional IP options to the VLAN network IPv6 settings. To add multiple IPv6 settings, including ULA, unique local addresses. And the last one here is added IPv6 addresses and IPv6 link local columns to the client device page. So hopefully that is something that you've been looking for if you are using IPv6. We also have more improvements for the uh, topology page filtering, validation of quality of service policies, improve the port filtering user experience, and more. You could also see all the bug fixes that they have done in Unify Network 10.0. That's gonna be it for my video on Unify Network 10.0. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next within the Unify Network application. Let me know down below which is your favorite new improvement. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.